Hi guys, today we're doing this workout voiceover style. I really just wanted to zone in for this one. So if you wanna get a snatched upper body with me because this workout was seriously so good, then stick around because I'm going to take you all through it. And you can grab a screenshot of the entire workout right now, or if you want, you can grab it from the description box below. And you will also find all the details to my entire outfit in today's workout down there as well. If you saw my last video, you know that I am now working with Gymshark and today's entire fit is from the them. So everything you need to know can be found in the description box below. As always, thank you guys so much for the love and support, but we're going to get into this video today. And right now is your reminder to not skip your warm up. This is a little montage of the warm up movements I went with to get prepped for this workout, just based off of how I was feeling and what we are going to be doing. And so whatever your warm up looks like, whatever your body needs, just make sure you get it done. And then we're going to go ahead and jump over to the weights. things more efficient this entire workout is superset so that we can get in do the work and get out first superset is starting off with bent over single arm dumbbell rows I am using a chair to brace myself while also giving me plenty of room to reach a full range of motion at the bottom now remember when rowing you aren't pulling straight up instead you are rowing that weight back toward your hip so you are rowing at an angle not a straight up and down line you also want to try to keep your torso twisting to a minimum the heavier you go and the closer you work to your failure, it is natural to have some, but you just want to try to keep it under control as much as possible. Keep your lats engaged, let them do the work, and just give it all you've got. You're doing 8 to 10 reps each set, so you are going to increase your weight each set while aiming to stick within that 8 to 10 rep range. Once you finish rowing on each side, you will lay down and get into 12 to 15 dumbbell skull crushers, again, aiming to increase the weight each set if possible. Floor skull crushers are one of my favorite variations, and they're also a great way to really challenge your strength because you do have that floor there as a fail safe. They also come in handy if you can't get a hold of a bench or you're training from home ever. Just remember that when you're performing skull crushers, you have your arms just slightly angled back, lock them there, and then just move from the elbow back behind your head with the weight. Next superset is starting off with wide grip pull downs, three sets of 10 to 12, again, increasing the weight each set here. Make sure to allow for a full lat stretch at the top and then pull down toward your upper chest without swinging your body back. So notice how still and tight my lower body is and the only movement is coming from my upper body. A little bit of swinging is okay if you're nearing the end of a set and you're just gassed, but if you find you need to excessively swing just to pull the weight down off rip, lower the weight a bit and then try again. Once you finish with the pull downs, you will get into alternating flat dumbbell chest presses and oh my, are these humbling. I want you choosing a true challenging weight here too, to use for all three sets. So don't pick some lightweight and just do your six to eight reps and get it over with. I want you to choose true challenging weight. You will see just how bad I am trembling by the end of these sets. You have six to eight reps each side and you will be alternating from one side to the other. And so when doing single arm chest presses, doing it 
this way can be a little bit more taxing, but holding that other arm up is acting as your counterweight. So not only is doing it this way quicker, but it's also going to be more helpful in keeping you balanced and aligned throughout the movement, especially when you're working with heavier weight and lower rep ranges, rather than just holding up and doing one side at a time. I definitely favor this way when I am working with a little bit heavier weight loads. When I'm going lighter, it definitely doesn't make as much of a difference, but when you are really pushing yourself and working in lower rep ranges like six to eight reps, I definitely favor having that counterbalance there. Superset three is seated, so grab yourself a chair or a bench and you are starting off with lateral raises. Now, since these are seated, you won't be bringing that weight down in front of you like you would a standing variation, but you do still want to be bringing those dumbbells out and up slightly in front of your body rather than directly straight out. Keep your traps relaxed and allow your lateral delts to do all the work. The seated variation is a bit more challenging because all of the momentum is taken out of the movement. So if you need to go a bit lighter, do so. You got three sets of 10 to 12 reps and if you can try to increase your weight each set. I know on smaller movements like this, it can be a little bit more challenging to increase your weight loads, but if you feel that you can and stick within that 10 to 12 rep range, do so. If not, and it's challenging enough for you, you can just keep the weight as is. After the raises, you will immediately get into bicep curls. So if you need to use different weight from the raises, you could just keep the other dumbbells with you by your side. Or if your gym's really busy and you don't wanna hog a bunch of dumbbells, you can just get up and change them out, but just try to get into your set as quickly as possible. So you will want to maintain an upright torso and a tight core, really focus on your biceps, pulling that weight up as you curl, really refrain from swinging as much as possible and get that good squeeze at the top of each rep. You got three sets of 12 to 15 reps here and again, increase the weight each set if you can. Last superset is going to be using a bench at an incline and it will start off with incline dumbbell chest flies. This exercise can feel a bit awkward at first to get down, but the easiest thing you can do is literally imagine you are on the chest fly machine and just mimic the exact arm path and movement. Also focusing on your chest the entire way through and getting that squeeze at the top, that really helps as well. So if you are newer to this movement, start lighter until you nail down your form and then increase to an appropriate working weight once you do feel comfortable. You have three sets here as well. You're doing it 10 to 12 reps and increase the weight each set if you can. That's pretty much you're going to be doing that for every single exercise in this workout if possible other than those alternating chest presses. So that's why I just keep reiterating that over and over again. You always want to make sure that you're really challenging yourself with your weight choices and the rep ranges given. And to finish, the last superset is going to be rear delt swings. So flip over on that bench and hang your arms in front of you with those dumbbells facing angled out. You will then bring the dumbbells out in that angled path, which should be around 30 to 45-ish degrees out from your body. So once you feel your rear delts fully contracted at the top, then come back down. They are called swings, but you don't actually want to just swing the weight back and forth. Obviously, you still want to control the weight and let your rear delts do the work, not the momentum. So 12 to 15 reps here, and then you are done. Try this workout out. Let me know how it goes in the comments below or on Instagram. If you're looking for more structured training, you can find my 12 week workout program in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.